2.1 practice problems. On the basis of the information opposite, which of the following arrangements have the binary compounds in order of increasing bond polarity? So that means that on the right, we should have high polarity, and on the left, we should have low polarity. So on the right, we should have a large difference in electronegativity. On the left, we should have a small difference in electronegativity. All of my compounds are the same, so I can just kind of compare throughout here. So for A, I'm dealing with CH4. So my difference in electronegativity between carbon and hydrogen, we have 2.5 minus 2.1. So my difference is 0 0.4. For silicon and chlorine, that bond, we have 1.8 and 3, so 3 minus 1.8 gives me 1.2. And then finally, we have sulfur and fluorine. Sulfur has an electronegativity of 2.5. Fluorine has an electronegativity of 4, so 4 minus 2.5 gives me 1.5. So if I was to arrange from lowest difference in electronegativity to highest difference, I would have my CH4, then my SiCl, then my SF bond. And again, all of these are the same compounds, they're just in different arrangements. So A is my correct choice since CH is my lowest electronegativity difference. Which of the following has the bonds arranged in decreasing polarity, meaning that uh, we're going to have high polarity on the left, low polarity on the right. Polarity is going to be based off of who I am bonded with. If I am ever bonded with the same element, then my electronegativity difference is zero. And I do have some examples of electronegativity here. Let's see if we have them in the actual no packet as well. We do. Okay, in the actual note packet, we have the electronegativities of all of the elements as well, so we can compare there. So anything bonded with itself is going to be an electronegativity difference of zero. Hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2.1. Fluorine has an electronegativity of 4. Nitrogen has an electronegativity of 3. Fluorine, again, is 4. Oxygen is 3.5. Nitrogen is 3. Oxygen, 3.5. Sulfur is 2.5. Technetium is here. Sorry about that. Technetium is here. That's going to be 2.1. Hydrogen, 2.1. Iodine, 2.5. Hydrogen, 2.1 again. Bromine, 2.8. Hydrogen, 2.1. Fluorine, 4. Antimony, 1.9. Iodine, 2.5. Antimony is 1.9. Technetium is 2.1. Chlorine is three. Okay, so looking here, this is a difference of 0 0.4. This has a zero difference of 0 0.7. So this is not going in the correct order, so B cannot be correct. This, I have a difference of 0 0.6. This, I have a difference of 0 0.2. Again, not going in the correct order, so D cannot be correct. Here I have a difference of 0 0.5, a difference of 1, and a difference of, uh, let's see, we're going to have 1.4. So this looks good so far. Here I have a difference of 1.9. Here I have a difference of 1. Here I have a difference of 0.
1.4 is different is larger than one. I'm sorry, my little brain part there. Okay, so A is going to be my my choice there, since uh, it's the only one that actually goes in correct numerical order. Which of the following scientific claims about the bond in a molecular compound of HF is most likely to be true? So HF hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2.1. Fluorine has an electronegativity of 4. First statement says that there's a partial negative charge on the hydrogen atom. This would mean that hydrogen has a higher electronegativity. That is not true. So that's going to be eliminated. Electrons are shared equally would mean that I have a very small differential between the electronegativities here. That is very much not true. We have a differential of 1.9, so that is not true. The bond is extremely weak. Uh, we have a very high electronegativity difference. Nothing to suggest that. And then finally, the bond is highly polar. Again, we have a gigantic uh, differential and electronegativity, so that is going to be my final answer. Which of the following uh, compounds contains both ionic and covalent bonds? So, all of these, I am looking for an ionic compound and a covalent. This is just going to be purely ionic since I just have a metal and a non-metal, so that can be eliminated fairly easily. This is going to be polar. The hydroxide uh, does tell me that we have a hydroxide group on the end. That is going to create a polar moment, but everything here has a pretty relatively close uh, range in electronegativity, so we're going to eliminate that. Um, here and here. Uh, same thing, we, we have just two elements being bonded together that are going to have relatively similar uh, electronegativities. We don't have a metal present. We don't have anything acting as a full ion. However, here, NH4, that is one of our polyatomic ions, which has a full positive charge. And chlorine would be functioning as our anion with a full negative charge. NH4 is going to be... Uh, acting as a polyatomic ion and acting as our cation, but inside NH4 we have bonds between nitrogen and hydrogen, and those bonds are covalent bonds. So that would be my choice. Uh, two pure elements react to form a compound. One element is an alkaline metal, X, and the other element is a halogen, Z. Which of the following is a valid scientific claim that could be made about the compound? So alkali metals are going to have one valence electron and halogens are going to have seven valence electrons. So that means that my alkali metal X should form a charge of positive one and my halogen element Z should form a charge of negative one. As the formula of XZ2, um, those charges would not work with that. Does not dissolve in water. All alkali metals are going to produce soluble compounds. It contains ionic bonds. I have a metal and a non-metal, so this sounds good. Contains covalent bonds. We have a metal and a non-metal, so that typically is not going to produce covalent bonds. So C would be my choice. I'm going to be forming a ionic bond. The elements carbon and selenium have the same electronegativity value of 2.55. Which of the following claims about the compound that forms between carbon and selenium is most likely to be true? So we have an electronegativity difference of zero. So that means that I'm going to be forming a covalent compound. And this is also going to be nonpolar. So I'm going to look for an answer that uh, contains those things. Carbon to selenium is unstable. I don't have any reason to believe that. Carbon to selenium bond is a nonpolar covalent. That was what I was looking for, so it sounds pretty good. The compound has the empirical formula of C to SE. Uh, we weren't talking about the number of valence electrons or anything like that. Um, in fact, selenium is going to have 
a charge of uh, negative two, typically, if we're forming an ionic compound, which we're not, we're forming a covalent compound, since my electronegativity difference is going to be zero, uh, which means I can form a very large complex. I have no idea what uh, my formula is going to be. A molecule of that compound would have a partial negative charge on the carbon atom. Again, I have an electronegativity difference of zero, so that means that I am not going to be forming any charges. So B, the carbon to selenium bond is nonpolar, is going to be my answer. Of the following compounds, which is the most ionic? So I'm looking for differentials here um, between my elements. So silicon has an electronegativity of 1.8. Chlorine has an electronegativity of three. Bromine, 2.8. Chlorine, three. Uh, phosphorus is 2.1. Chlorine, three. Chlorine, three. Oxygen, 3.5. And then calcium, is at one and chlorine is at three. So for the most ionic, we are looking for the largest differential between the electronegativities. So the difference between 1.8 and three is gonna give me 1.2. Difference between 2.8 and three is going to give me 0 0.2. Difference between 2.1 and three is gonna give me 0 0.9. Difference between 3 and 3.5 is going to give me 0 0.5. And difference between 1 and 3 is going to give me 2. So I'm looking for the largest differential between my electronegativities. That is going to be my calcium chloride compound. Of the following single bonds, which is the least polar? So we're looking for the least or the smallest electronegativity difference. Nitrogen has an electronegativity of three. Hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2.1. Hydrogen, 2.1. Fluorine is four. Oxygen is 3.5. Fluorine is four. Iodine is 2.5. Fluorine is four. Oxygen is 3.5 and hydrogen is 2.1. So we're looking for electronegativity differences here. Difference between 3 and 2.1 is 0 0.9. Difference between 2.1 and 4 is going to be 1.9. Difference between 3.5 and 4 gives me 0 0.5. Difference between 2.5 and, and 4 gives me 1.5. Difference between 3.5 and, and 2.1 is going to be 1.4. We're looking for the least polar, so we're looking for the smallest electronegativity difference. That is going to give me option C.